condamné à l'activisme citoyen. Emilia, veuillez vous présenter. Est-ce qu'on peut applaudir Emilia Parce qu'il n'a pas bien écrit une vision, il n'a pas écrit. 
définition, il n'a même pas eu le document qui guide comment ça passe dans la situation. Sinon, c'est mieux d'avoir ça avant de même penser que je vais commencer. Donc, si tu as une idée même, il y a des gens qui ont qui a, qui a des idées pour commencer. Tu parlais à tes amis que moi j'ai une idée, je vais commencer quelque chose. Avant de dire que je vais commencer quelque chose, c'est mieux de dire ça. Parce que tu vas faire des choses en parlant. On dit qu'on veut, on veut, on veut, on veut, on veut, on veut, on veut. Quand tu demandes, où est ça Je n'ai pas encore saisi. Je n'ai pas encore écrit ça. Je vais commencer à écrire ça et ça prend souvent même un an, deux ans. J'ai une idée. Où est l'écrit En anglais, on dit, he will write books for them. Everyone will write books for them. I always tell people the difference we have between those who are excelling and call themselves experts and we will work at the graduate level who don't document what we do. So you are an expert, but then you cannot be identified or named an expert because there's nothing that can show your work. If you go on the website or on Google and you search, you will find that most of what exists as expert institutions, as global international organizations that are making a lot of information and noise, we have little or no way to compare to what we in the grassroots do. But because they document everything they do, they are seen as experts. They document every little thing they do. If they say is, they write it down. And it's on the web page. If it's not on their website, on the blog. If it's not on the blog, it's on the Facebook page. So what are you doing and what are you documenting? That's the first thing that you need to do. So if it's a vision, you need to write it clearly. Most people do work, they don't have a vision. Our vision is, our mission is. So nobody knows what you do. And when they ask for references, that you should not carry big jargons. Some people want to write the biggest terms existing in the world. But that's not what people want to hear. They want simple terms. We exist to do this to these people in this community. So your vision should be clear, clean, and cut short. It should be, when they say keys, keep it short and simple. Let people catch what you're saying in one sentence. Your mission is very important. Your objective is very important. And then what we usually call mini baos. You can have a personal mini bao, or you can have a mini bao for your organization or your institution where you say what you want to do in a very short paragraph so that whoever sees you knows what you're doing even before they come to you for more information. It's kind of like an introductory note that you sell out to the public and that's what you need to have to exist. Um, when we go now with more technical details, after you have those, your mission clearly set out, after you have your let's say maybe your information clearly put, your mission statement, your vision. It's important to also have your procedures, what we call standard operating procedures. You should have a document that states how you do your work. In that standard operating procedures, you should have from the beginning, who works, how do they do it. If you arrive at the meetings at 8 a.m., you put it there. If you don't arrive at 8 a.m., you put it there. So you should clearly state what you have in place for your organization to to exist and what people need to do. And sometimes you will even touch on maybe your engagement procedures. Like if you're a member, if you're a volunteer, if you're a board of director, if you are a maybe a stakeholder, because several stakeholders may be part of your decision making process. How do they work? How do their decisions come? What processes are they supposed to follow for things to exist? Doing all of that professionalizes whatever we do. Because most of us exist as we can say the word is not non-challenge, like clandestine, mm -hmm. illegal. We don't exist. We exist, but we don't exist. If I ask you today, like a couple of people will meet me, I want to do this, I'm doing this, and I ask, what is your constitution? We have a concept note. A concept note should be maximum five page in the of your organization, from mm -hmm. what you thought of when you started it, to what you plan to do, and to what your vision is. What do you want to do in five years? What do you want to do in ten years? If you don't have that, and you're speaking to a partner, and they ask you, what do you plan to do? Can you send it to me by email? The conversation ends. You start the conversation and your partner is interested and then you ask for documents and you take one year to send. Seriously, no. Business done, fail. Like, it's a failed deal. So how do you prepare yourself to excel? So those are things that need to exist. You need to have those, and once you have them, you have to make sure you legalize. People exist and they're not legalized. Why? <laughs> People exist, they are not legalized, they don't have a team. Let's not even go to bank accounts. Let's not even go to 
Because sometimes the first thing is not an office. You don't need an office to exist. You can work from home. When I started my organization, I was working at home. And at one point, people thought I was frustrated because they saw me at home every day. Then the next step I had, I had a small office in the church. I was still doing my work and I was creating great impact. And then one step after the other, community members keep giving services. Because once you're doing good work, people will come to you with support. Fundraising does not mean you all the time going to make people for support. When you're doing good work, people will reach out to you. There's a lot of stakeholders that have to make that I've never met. I don't know them. When we put up our publications on our website, on our social media accounts, and people share, they contribute. People I don't know, Cameroonians in different countries, donating to support what we are doing because they feel that this is what is supposed to be done. So you document everything you have. Because people always say, I don't have the means. But how do you trade the means? It's by you putting in steps, places, or procedures that can help you attract the right means. When I started, my first office, as I said, was at home. And then later, I went to a church. So I was talking to my pastor, and he buy into my vision. And immediately he bought into my vision. The first thing he did was to offer me a space. And that space was a small room. And a lot of people came to me all the time, how can your NGO be in a church? I'm like, my NGO is in the church, of not mean it's a religious organization. It's clearly stated, we are here because we need a space to work. And we're starting from there. And that was support because we're not paying rent. Because of what they saw we're doing, they gave us support. Sometimes the government even gives that kind of support. There's office space that when you go as a like a light organization who is doing good work in the community and meet maybe the mayor, they can give you a space in one of the government buildings and you have a room to work or a desk to work on. So there are different processes that you can use to re to manage uh, fundraising resources and bringing resources to your institution. And if you have these things, it's easier because people want to document what they are also doing. If somebody gives you 100 francs, they won't be able to document that they give you 100 francs. And if you don't have documents to give them, they will not give you. So we need to put in place those structures. And it goes as far as even joining networks or working together as in platforms. Take for instance, Pijadeka is a platform of young organizations, youth-led organizations. Many people here are not members, they're participating. I don't think anybody has asked the question of how can I become a member. Now, if you want to become a member and you don't have a recognized structure, how will you become a member? If you don't have narrative reports of your activities, how do you become a member? There exist several other networks like this. For young people, there are others that are not even for young people, but for people working on particular thematics. How do you become members? So you have to be able to prepare yourself for growth. I always tell people that it's not about you having growth, but you preparing for growth. Because if you don't prepare for growth and growth comes very speedily, you will die. There are people that have ideas, they have not put any structure in place, they have not planned for it properly. And then they are just looking for money, I want funding, I want, I want, I want. They think that it's just about getting funding. Once you get funding and you're not structured, your idea will die because you'll not be able to report to your partners. You'll not be able to report to your donors. And once you cannot have that continuity of information, of communication, everything dies. Mm -hmm. So it's important to note that in an association, you need a trusted team, you need a clearly stated vision and mission statement, you need a concept book of at most five pages, and then you should also have one which is possible, one page. It can be maybe a video, it can be in a, the, a diagram, something that speaks of what you're doing. That when someone sees it, they know who you are, why you exist, who you are serving, and where you are working. So it's good to have those collected information spread out. And when you do that, you need people that will support your work. And once you start meeting those people and you don't have the information, they don't have time. You cannot meet someone that is working maybe with the UN and you're asking for assistance that I need to help this organization. We do this, we do that. Can you help us get maybe structure our organization? It kills the conversation. So let's take time to do these things that I put Sometimes you have to pay for them. I will honestly say it. I pay for services. I ask people to pay for my programs. Because one thing is, people pay for things and then they take it serious. When it's free, you have to run behind them to follow up or they come and then the way they pay, they will knock at your door every two seconds. So it's important to put money where you want to get something. Make back or do everything you want to achieve in life. And once you do that, you will go as far as you can achieve and then you will grow with your team. I want to touch on grow with your team because it's something people always forget. In associations, in working together, you should try to help others grow. 
We have a lot of difficulties working together as CSOs, as entrepreneurs, as businesses, because there's competition and collaboration. Mm -hmm. People are always fighting. People are always fighting. There's a lot of fights. I don't know. But we should work together to help each other grow. When we are giving feedback, we can give critical feedback. People should not always receive critical, critical feedback as accusations. They are simply feedback that wants us to grow or change and make things better. So we should always be open to feedback. I like when someone criticizes me because it helps me make my decisions better. It helps me make my programs better. So if you tell me all the time your work is still good, I feel like you're flattering me and you just want me to look at your way. When you give me critical feedback, I take it seriously. Because I want to know what you saw that was wrong and how and your proposal from how I can make it better. So it's important to have all of these things in place and always help others. If you find a way that you can support somebody get something or achieve something, do it all the time. Don't always think that it's always supposed to be one person. Because we fight all the time. In this civil society world, what I see most of the time is fight. It's like we are in the jungle or in the lion's den and everybody struggling to survive. Whereas we are supposed to collaborate together and achieve the goals that we have set together and then make our communities better. Thank you. Je vais parler très rapidement de tout ce qui est de financement qui n'est pas français, puisque moi je travaille au service de coopération dans ma salle de France, donc c'est peut-être l'aspect que je vais élaborer. Euh, D'abord, 